By looking first at the consequence operator, uh, you may recall from the introduction that we then also restrict ourselves initially to positive logic programs and then afterwards generalize to normal logic programs as we will do in the second section. Okay, let's first of all recall the definition of the consequence or the TP operator. Now, the idea is more or less we have a, a positive logic program P and we have a set of atoms which acts as the input and then the TP operator or as it is also sometimes called the immediate consequence operator uh, gives us all the heads of the rules that are applicable in view of X. So let's briefly look at the definition, right? So we look at all rules in our positive logic program and now we um, identify those where the positive body literals are contained uh, in our input. And so those rules actually they apply, they fire and they contribute their head to the result of the operator. And this is actually uh, indicated here where we accumulate the heads of the applicable rules. Keep in mind that um, I'll keep being lazy in dropping the parentheses around the X and we will see actually in a sec why this makes sense. Okay, so this is the TP operator uh, that is sometimes again also called the immediate consequence operator because what we want to compute after all are all the consequences of P and you may actually recall from the introduction that there we use the procedural characterization uh, which is this one where we calculate it uh, the consequences of a positive logic, logic program starting by the empty set and then applying the operator iteratively in this, in this loop here until nothing changed, until no new conclusions were forthcoming, right? Good. This was the procedural characterization that we used to give an intuition more or less on how the TP operator can be used to calculate the consequences of a positive logic program. Now let's make this precise in a mathematical way. Capturing this computation boils down to two things. First, we have to fix the initialization and second, we have to characterize the iterated application of the TP operator on the result of the previous iteration. Actually, this can be mapped more or less one-to-one -to, -one to a mathematical characterization as follows. So we simply denote iterated applications of the TP operator by adding here the subscript J. So now the zeroth iteration of more or more or less applying the TP operator zero times, none at all, the only thing that we do, we project out the input here. So X is the input, so we project out X. Keep in mind that in our case, actually, the input was given as the, as the empty set. So the initialization was just projecting out the empty set. And then for each iteration, we characterize the result of the iteration. So this is the ith iteration by, by saying it is the result of applying the TP operator to what we obtained in the i minus one iteration, right? So this is, this is defined uh, inductively or recursively, right? So this is the result of uh, applying the TP operator i minus one times. And on this result, we apply the TP operator, and this defines what it means to apply the TP operator i times. Okay, and with it, we can now nicely characterize the consequences of a whole positive logic program. Yeah, so this allows us to capture the smallest model of a positive logic program, as you may remember from the introduction, or the consequences of a positive logic program, CN of P, simply as the union of all uh, iterated applications of the TP operator applied to the empty set. Now, this construction is actually the result of our procedural characterization if it terminates, right? And then actually the union uh, is the same as the result of the last uh, iteration. However, this guy actually here also works for the infinite case, which perhaps is not so interesting to us now. Anyway, uh, what we also actually um, can exploit is the fact that our TP operator is monotone. Uh, and this is the property here. So if X is a subset of Y, then these are the two inputs. And then we apply to both the TP operator, then also the result of applying it to the smaller set 
uh, is a subset of applying the TPO grade to the larger set. Because with this monotonicity property, we can just reuse a good old mathematics, actually the knaster tarski theorem, to tell us that the smallest fixed point of the operator TP equals the union of all iterated applications. And this is of, these are, of course, the consequences of our positive logic program, or you may remember, the smallest model of the positive logic program P. Okay, so this is more or less recapturing notion that we already saw in the introductory section, but now nailed down, made precise with this mathematical characterization. Again, as, as I was saying, there is of course a logical characterization. The consequences of a positive logic program are given by the smallest model. And now we have a mathematical characterization or an operational characterization by means of the TP operator. Okay, let's have an example to, well, to look at this once more and deepen it a little bit before we then really go into solving uh, ASP programs. Okay, so here's an example. And it's a positive logic program and it consists of six rules. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm stressing this because I'm abusing a bit the comma here, first as a separator of the elements in the set, and then also as a separator here of the body elements of the rule S, if, Q, and T. Okay, anyway, I hope you forgive me for that. Now that we have a positive logic program, we can compute its consequences by using iterated applications of the TP operator. So here I listed the first uh, seven uh, iterations, but keep in mind there are many, many more. Even though, well, given that we have a finite uh, logic program, um, at some point we reach a fixed point and then we have seen more or less all the results and we've seen this here. Here we reach a fixed point. So at, if we, at the fifth iteration, applying the TP operator to the result of the fourth iteration gives us the same, same result again. And from there on, nothing changes anymore. Okay, otherwise, just briefly looking at the, at, at, at the trace again, we initialize things with the empty set. And this is more as applying the TP operator zero times. And since we gave our procedure as, the, as, as argument the empty set, we get the empty set as our, as our base, in, as our in initialization. That was, that's what we did before, before the while loop, right? Okay. And then what can we apply if we have the empty set? So what can we get when applying the TP operator to the empty set? Only the facts, because their body is trivially contained in the empty set. So we get P and Q, because here the bodies are empty. That's the result of the first uh, iteration. And so things continue that way. In the next iteration, of course, P and Q apply again. And since we have already P and Q from the last iteration, we now can also apply the rule R if P, and so we additionally get R. And so this continues in this way until, until the fifth iteration, until we have applied all applicable rules. And there's one guy who remains inapplicable, that's the rule U if V, because there's actually no rule with the V in the head, so this rule will never be applicable, and we will never be able to add U to the consequences of our program. Anyway, perhaps you stop the video here and uh, briefly look whether I did everything correctly or just to recall a little bit things. And uh, well, and in case you did that, I hope it, it, it revoked memories from the introductory section where we already worked our way through the basic mechanics. Anyway, so since, again, this is by applying the mathematics, notably this famous knaster tarski theorem, we know that if we have the TP operator, and since this guy is monotone, that by, by iterating it, we can compute the smallest fixed point of the TP operator. And this is, is another characterization of the consequences of a positive logic program. So here it is. So more or less, the union of all the iterations that we get here uh, constitute the consequences of our program P, Q, R, T, and S. And this guy is also the smallest fixed point of the TP operator applied to this positive logic program. So what does it take to be a smallest fixed point? First you have to be a fixed point and then you have to be the smallest one. Let's just check this briefly. So to be a fixed point of course means that if you apply the TP operator to, to the to our candidate here, you get the candidate out again. And this is, of course, the case as witnessed here by the fifth and the sixth uh, iteration. 
And then to be the smallest one, one actually has to check that each subset of the set PQRTS is not a fixed point. And there are actually quite quite many. Some of, the, some of them we've seen already. So we've seen actually that the empty set is not a fixed point because if you apply the TP operator to the empty set, you get P and Q out. So the empty set is not a fixed point. P and Q is also not a fixed point because we've seen applying the TP operator to P and Q gives us P, Q and R. And in the same way, P, Q, R and T is also not a fixed point, right? So we have seen already four subsets that are no fixed points and there are many more that one had to, to, to verify to be sure that actually this is the smallest fixed point. But anyway, the nice thing is that the, the mathematics that was established actually way back, uh, around 100 years back, um, already gives us the result and tells us if we have a monotone operator and we iterate it from the smallest element of the arguments, which is here the empty set, um, then we will get, we will compute the smallest fixed point uh, of, of the operator. And keep in mind, this is essential also in computer science because after all, the TP operator or is an operator that can be seen as a body of a while loop, as we just did, right? And since the body of this while loop is monotone, it all, only produces more at each step. This also backs up how to compute smallest fixed points of loops, right? So this is actually nothing special to ASP, nothing special to logic program. This is, this is mathematics that is uh, uh, fundamental actually to computer science. And the reason why I make now such a big fuss or larger fuss, right, is that this handling of, of operators that are monotone, that we can iterate, and that they, this gives us actually then the smallest, the smallest fixed point of the operator, will actually occur, uh, well, with a couple of other operators we'll see later on, because they will actually be models for characterizing the, the, the propagation whatever this means now, uh, in, in solvers. And there we actually need the same, the same type of mathematics, just that the operators are getting even more complex than our nice cozy TP operator. But after all, I trust that you already got an intuition of what, what the TP operator does, how you can compute the consequences of a positive logic program, and hence this was perhaps good to introduce this notion with something you already know. Anyway, I zip it now. And I zip it again because this was quite lengthy. And let's now jump to uh, the, I would say, the real fun part of this, uh, of this uh, part here. So how to solve uh, logic programs in ASP by starting from first principle, looking at the consequence operator, looking at the definition of stable models. So stay tuned.